Mini Toots. Dwarf Fortress. Reading the Embark screen. Once you've created a world to play in, you can go to the main menu and select Start Playing, then Dwarf Fortress. First, you will see the Updating World screen, where the game generates two more weeks of history and events before opening the Embark screen. There is a lot of information on this screen. First, we'll look at this part, the three zoom levels of the map. The rightmost panel shows the entire world map, zoomed out as much as need be to fit it all on the screen. As you look around, the blinking yellow X on this panel will show you where in the world you are. The middle panel shows a regional view of the world. Note that if your world is very small, this will be identical to the rightmost panel. The blinking yellow X on this panel moves one space each time you press one of the arrow or numpad keys to select a small area. The leftmost panel is the local view. Most of it will be brown to show that it is not selected. The highlighted box shows your selected area, a 4x4 box by default. This box represents the specific area where you will start your new fortress. To move this box around and select a specific area, use the U, M, K, and H keys. You can also resize the local area by hitting Shift plus U, M, K, or H. If you're worried about remembering all these keys, don't. They're all listed here at the bottom of the screen. All the way on the right side of the screen, there is detailed information about the specific box you have selected in the local view. At the very top is the region name. Below that is the type of biome. Next is temperature. If this is warm or hot, water will not freeze. If it's temperate, it will probably freeze for part of the year. If it's cold, it will freeze for most of the year, and freezing means it's always frozen. New players might find warm or hot climates easiest to get started with. The next line is trees. If this says none or sparse, you might have trouble finding enough wood for beds and fuel. It's easiest to get started on a map that says heavily forested here. Other vegetation refers to harvestable plants. This includes food you can forage and cook or brew, as well as other plants that can be used for things like clothing and paper. The surroundings line tells you how dangerous the wild animals in the area are. If it says wilderness or untamed wilds, you might have to worry about predators like wolves, cougars, or bears. Calm surroundings are safer. Beware of the purple tiles on the map, which will say evil or terrifying. All kinds of awful things happen in these regions. Mirthful or joyous wilds areas are especially pleasant. Each region usually has a river or brook somewhere on it, and the name of it will appear on the next line. Be careful though, if your highlighted box in the local view doesn't have the blue line in it somewhere, that means the water feature won't actually come through your fortress, and it will be harder to find fresh water. At the bottom of this panel is a list of the layers of the earth and what you will find there. Important information for dwarfs. You may see sand or clay, which can be used for glass and pottery, soil, which can be used for farming, shallow and deep metals, or a flux stone layer. Ideally, you want both shallow and deep metals for resources, and flux stone will allow you to make steel. You may also see aquifer on this list if you didn't disable them before generating your world. Aquifers are very difficult to deal with and can prevent you from getting stone and other resources, so avoid them if you're a new player. This entire list will only show details for one biome. If your selected area contains more than one biome, you can toggle between them using the F keys. If this is an option, it will show up at the bottom of the screen. If you don't see any F key options, it means your area only has one biome. Aside from the biome information, you can also toggle other information on this far right panel by hitting Tab. The next screen shows your neighbors which civilizations you can trade with, or which might invade you if they're hostile, as indicated by a red dashed line. The next option lets you choose your specific civilization, which will be highlighted in blue on the world map panel. This usually doesn't affect much, though it may change some small details, such as which specific foods you can take with you when you embark. The next tab shows relative elevation, and the next shows how steep the cliffs in the area are. Higher numbers mean steeper cliffs. 
If you want a totally flat map, try to find all zeros. If you're having trouble finding a location that suits you, you can press F to open the map search tool. Use the arrow keys to navigate up and down the list and choose the parameters that you want. You don't have to make choices for all of them. One of the most popular uses of this tool is to find areas without any aquifer. The tool will highlight all areas on the map that meet your needs, which can save you a lot of time, especially on a large map. You can embark almost anywhere on the map, but not in already existing sites, which look like this. Once you've made your decision, you can finally embark by pressing the E key. You can then choose to either play now, using an automatically generated set of dwarves and equipment, which should meet all your needs, or prepare for the journey carefully, which gives you full control, but can take a lot of time. For your first few games, you might want to choose play now, until you get the hang of things. That's it, you did it! Bye!